All right, so I don't have anything as exciting as Juliet. Um, <laughs> so I always... Squares, quite squares are exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you find statistics very sexy, which I hope. Does everyone find statistics sexy? No? No, oh, that's a shame. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I won't make any jokes about statisticians making mean lovers or anything like that. Um, so most of my interests are actually in biostatistics and in epidemiology, surprise, surprise. Um, I guess most of my research and things, the grants and so on that I'm involved in are in the area of clinical epidemiology. Um, so I have a particular interest in diagnostic tests, including monitoring, so repeated diagnostic tests over time, and also in risk prediction. Um, but I, I think like a lot of statisticians, I kind of get dragged in to pretty much everyone else's research. So, for example, I also work in health financing in Fiji and Timor-Leste there. Um, on TED and OFF, so that's a youth, and, um, youth drug service, which Sally will talk to you a bit more about. Um, so some of my um, clinical epidemiology, I've done a lot of stuff in kidney disease, osteoporosis. So if anyone's interested in particular clinical areas, I can talk to you about those. Um, it's also probably good, um, I think, to just to indicate some of the other projects which I've supervised recently. So I supervised a student from Nepal who did a survey about antenatal care in using a survey called the DHS, which is available to anyone. Um, I'm currently supervising an NPH student who's doing a project looking at uh, the use of child restraints and preventing death in crashes. So that's using an American data set called FARS, which again, you can just download. Um, last semester, I supervised a pediatric nephrologist who did a project using a data set called ANSDATA, which is a census of all dialysis and transplants for, kidney, for kidneys in Australia. So there are a lot of opportunities that I can talk to you about if you have particular interests. And there's often a lot of data available freely through the web or you can just write to people and ask them for it. So don't be worried if you don't have data. If you have a particular area that you're interested in, I can talk to you or anyone else here can talk to you and we can discuss a, some projects. Um, I'll just also add a couple of things to Juli what Juliet has said. Um, with projects, it's also advisable to start talking to people reasonably early. Um, so a couple of months at least before the start of semester. There are a few reasons for that. One is projects, unlike other courses, you can't just sort of start hitting the ground running on the first day of semester. There's a lot of lead time in terms of developing a proposal. Sometimes you might have to go through ethics, uh, which can take a while. And I think just also working out timelines and so on can take a bit of time. So start talking to people if you're interested as soon as possible, so i.e. today. Um, and I think that will really make for a successful project. Um, so each of those last three projects I mentioned, um, the plan is one of those has already been published and the other two will be published. So a lot of projects can end up being published. And if you're thinking about a future career, either in research or even if you're planning to um, go on for a lot of government jobs, having publications is viewed very favourably. But I think Husna will talk to you about PhD articulation and so on. So